Hello everyone, welcome to this month's In the Community Special. I'm Jennifer Beck. When you think of mission work, what comes to mind? Perhaps you envision a person living in a hut in the middle of a jungle telling natives about Jesus. Well, there are missionaries who do just that and I'm grateful for them. But how about mission work being about tacos? Today I introduce you to Jason and Amanda Harris, missionaries to Lima and the surrounding region, and their main form of sharing Jesus is through food. I am so excited to have Jason and Amanda Harris here with me in the studio. We're going to talk about a whole gamut of things, but we're going to start out by talking about Operation Love Whosoever, um, whoso that, you know, that ties into a, a Bible verse that's always been one of my favorites Absolutely. when it comes to the Whosoever Bible verse. But tell me, tell me about what is this? What is Operation Love Whosoever? Operation Love Whosoever is a nonprofit. Uh, we're, we're registered as a nonprofit through the, the state of Ohio. Um, and really what we exist to do is meet the material needs of our local community. Um, we've done that uh, most specifically this last summer through giving away free tacos. Mostly because I love Jesus and I love tacos. And <laughs> when you put both of them together, a lot of great things happen. So. So tacos and Jesus, well, not in that order. Jesus and yeah, tacos. Yeah, we definitely got to keep the number one thing. What it is, one. I first, uh, okay, I've known Jason, and maybe you've known Jason and Amanda for many years, but I first learned about Operation Whosoever um, through your Facebook page mm -hmm. because you started talking about tacos. Yeah. And when did, but this didn't all just start recently. When does this all begin for you guys? Operation Love Whosoever kind of goes back about seven years ago, um, and um, I, I had a vision. Um, I was still doing full-time employment and that sort of thing, but um, I just thought, how could we bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to the people? Um, I think we're at a time in American culture where you know a lot of people have left the church, been disenfranchised, and, and um, so what, what does it look like when the church leaves the four walls mm -hmm and goes out into the community and engages mm -hmm. in the marketplace, ultimately kind of an, an axe type of model. Um, and so, um, so seven years ago, I made a Facebook post that was half serious and, and half holy. Um, <laughs> and I said, if God would provide the means, we want to go take a taco truck, run it down every city or every uh, road and, and street in Lima, give away free tacos and talk about how to tr find hope in the midst of a hopeless world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for, for a couple of years, you know, life got busy and, and we did a lot of things. I had left my full-time employment and, um, you know, we were just doing ministry. We we're doing local ministry um, all this time. And, and, but that dream and that vision was always there um, that something was missing. And God kind of led us. Sometimes God leads us to a place of uncomfortability. Mm, yeah. uh, the Holy Spirit yeah. is called the comforter. <laughs> but you don't need a comforter if you're not uncomfortable. And so we were led to a place of uncomfortability, me personally, as to purpose and reason. And keep in mind, I'm doing ministry and preaching and doing the things that I do. Um, and, and I feel fulfilled in what I'm doing, yet at the same time, I knew there was something more. And so in November of 2022, God really got a hold of me with some unsettling in my soul. Mm -hmm. And through some really cool turn of events, series of events, God made it clear that it was time. Uh, to, to take a step of faith, buy a trailer uh, with a service window, and um, start giving away tacos in the city of Lima, Ohio. So Amanda, tell me how it was for you to walk through this process as well, um, to see your husband going through there, but this is a joint venture. Mm -hmm. You too uh, were part of God calling to be a part of this. Yeah, um, just to watch God um, work through all the details from seven years ago mm -hmm. when he made that Facebook post and, and the conversations about, you know, if if this would happen and, and we would, you know, talk about it from time to time and, and sometimes laugh about it, you know, because I just didn't see it. There was just no evidence of, of that happening. We were doing other things, you know, living life, doing ministry. Um, so when when this happened, um, just the confirmation from the Lord I just knew that it was from God and that it was his perfect timing and that he had set us up and um, just to walk in this. So I had total peace about it. Mm -hmm. um, I knew that we were following the call of God on our lives um, to, 
to go forth and, and to do this. And it's been exciting, really. So tell me what you've done then. November 2022 is when you bought the taco truck. Obviously, you weren't doing tacos at that time. No. But now here we are less than a year later when we're taping this, yeah. this interview and you've given out a lot of tacos. So walk me through how God is reaching people through a taco shell. Uh, so as of uh, this summer, as of this moment, we've given away 1,020 tacos. <laughs> Uh, which is actually a good Tuesday for me, uh, but because uh, <laughs> I love tacos. Uh, but um, so what we've seen is uh, this deep need. Um, and uh, the first time that we went out, uh, I had uh, one of my dear friends, Danny Butler, with me, and um, we encountered a woman uh, with her two small children, and she came up and and we fed her and and fed her kids. I think we even gave them a couple extra tacos because mm -hmm. you know we try to we, we try to watch our numbers, but in certain case scenario we listen to the Holy Spirit, and um, and then as she was walking away, she turned back and looked at me, and began to cry, and she said, "If you wouldn't have given us these tacos, my kids wouldn't have had a hot meal today. Mm -hmm. All we have is chips and snacks at the house." And it was heartbreaking, but it was highly motivating, mm -hmm. um, and it elicited a large. I'm not like a big crier, but you know, tears are going down my mm -hmm. eye um, as I'm thinking about this. So sometimes we don't, see, we don't know the needs, like we know them in a general sense, but until you actually get involved, then you see faces to go with stories. Yeah. I think many times we hear stories and think we understand the story, but it's only when you personally engage, and this is the beauty of Jesus. He personally engages us. Mm -hmm. He personally engages us in the midst of our brokenness in the midst of our heartache, in the midst of our need. Mm -hmm. This is where Jesus shows up, right? Bl uh, you know, blessed are those that are mourning. Bless blessed are, are those that are hurting. Bl this is where God really works the best. It's in our weakness that he is made strong. And so we've had so many stories like that. Um, one story on, on finance is really funny. We don't take donations at the time of, of giving away food. Mm -hmm. Um, some people do, and we don't hate on that. That's, that's according to their ministry, but just our, our spirit is, we want to give it as a pure act of love with no expectation of anything back. So we don't have a donation jar out or anything like that. We get donations other ways by the body of Christ taking care of us. Um, but we had a, an outreach at, uh, on Kibbe Street. And um, would you like to tell that story? Because he actually engaged with you. Yeah, so a, a gentleman um, who was very much in need um, came up to get his tacos and um, he, he pulled out a couple of dollars and three quarters and he wanted to give that um, to us. And, and so I went out and I talked to him and I said, no, we just, we want to give um, you this food. It, it's free, we don't, we don't want anything. Mm -hmm. And he insisted. Um, that we would take this money. And, and again, I, I tried to, you know, tell him, no, I, we don't want your money. And, um, but he, he asked, he said, please. He said, I want to give this to you. He said, I, I won this money today and, and I want to bless what you're mm -hmm. doing. Thank you so much. And it was, it just touched my heart and our hearts in such a special way that um, I, we took it and it, it sits on a shelf. and. <sighs> at the house is just a reminder of, um, you know, people and just their hearts and, and their appreciation um, for us just going out and just showing them love. That's really what this is about is we just want to love people and have the opportunity to share Jesus with them. Absolutely. And as you say that, it just causes me to kind of look at the whole big picture in my mind of where our world is and how selfish we've become and how, uh, focused on so many other things and this whole notion of loving with no expectation mm -hmm. in return. I mean, yes. that is such, that is all Jesus, you Absolutely. know, that's what he did. And, but yet it's so counterculture anymore yeah. for us to do that. And I, I imagine that every time you go out, you, you recognize that happening. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So our model <laughs> is that we give away the food. Um, we don't press people to pray with them. Um, I never want food to be like a, a carrot on a stick. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, okay, now pray the sinner's prayer, right? It's mm -hmm. not about that because we recognize that in order for someone uh, to come to the Lord, the Holy Spirit needs to be involved. Um, but what we've seen is that the Holy Spirit is cultivating people's hearts long before they walk up to our taco truck. 
So we do offer to pray with them. Um, we offer uh, because the world's crazy and everybody, uh, I would say we have, I, I don't know what a percentage success rate is, but um, it's success if we give away a taco. Um, but, but many people just want prayer for their families. They want prayer for their kids. They want prayer for their finances. They want prayer for their situations. Um, and so that's where we kind of, you know, we recognize that the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. Uh, we don't want to beat anybody over the head with anything. Um, and so that's part of the idea of Operation Love Whosoever is that it's for whosoever. Uh, we don't care if you have a mansion or if you're homeless. Um, we're there to showcase the goodness and, and the graciousness of God and then give the promise that God might have a better plan for your life than what you do. And if you find yourself in a situation where you're wondering, um, which we're in a world of wondering yes. right now and yeah. looking for truth. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, as believers in Christ, we, we not only have the truth, we have the life and the way as well in the person of Jesus Christ. And so ultimately, that's what our intent is, is to be able to give this free gift of salvation away. And we've prayed the, the sinner's prayer with so many people mm -hmm. um, and, and just really kind of directed them not only to Jesus, but then also some practical resources. We work pretty closely with Restoration House, uh, Bobby Navarez and her great ministry. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Neighborhood Relief Ministries has been very helpful, Dave Rosnowski and Heather Rosnowski. Um, and so we're able to kind of redirect them to something that can help them. Um, other ministries that do bigger things than what we can do to be able to help them on the long term as well. So, Your hearts really seem to be focused, I know wherever God would want, but right here in Lima. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and why, yes. explain to me how you, what, not everybody feels that way. Yeah. You know, there's people mm -hmm. who are like, get me out of Lima. <laughs> you know, they're like, what is this, what does the city have for me? But yet there are people here that Jesus loves and he, you are showing that love to these people through them. You know, why, why not take it somewhere else? Why Lima? Well, um, there's a deep need here, um, and God planted me here. Um, and I think that uh, if the collective body of Christ would view where they're at in life as that God planted them there, mm -hmm. um, you don't have to have the gift of evangelism to be an evangelist, right? Um, I think that there are plumber evangelists. I think there are construction worker evangelists. I think that there are accounting evangelists. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that the charge that Jesus gives us is to go into the world and preach this good news. The Savior has come, and, and, and through Him you can be right with God. A right standing with God is through Christ Jesus. And so we were planted in Northwest Ohio. And so even though we've had opportunities to go into other areas, and, and, and we might explore that at some point in time, um, I, I think our, at, the, at the ground the basis of where we want to start, we want to start in the city uh, because there is a lot of poverty in the city. There is a lot of need in the city. Um, and we want to not run away from those. We want to go to them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we understand that when we give somebody a taco, you fed them for a day, right? But the, the bread of life is ultimately the solution. In this world, we've got a million problems, we've got one answer. As believers in Christ, we've got one answer to these problems, right? We're, we're very much a one-hit wonder <laughs> type of band, <laughs> right? Faith and allegiance unto the Lord through Jesus Christ. And so if we're going to engage some of these issues on a societal level, uh, the people of God have to rise up and say, okay, well, we can do the things that we can do as a society. That's okay, right? We do need to take care of these things. But at the same time, that's not going to fix the aching and the longing inside the soul because only Jesus does it. Jason and Amanda, as I listen to you, as I listen to you speak right now, you sound like you've had it all together forever. Because <laughs> what you're saying is the truth. Yeah. Is that the way it's been? No, <laughs> no. Uh, both me and my wife were not raised in church. Um, not, not in any way, shape, or form. I mean, we had some religious understanding of things, but, you know, my, my family's more of a uh, Christmas and Easter type of thing. Um, and, and so we were not raised with, with good theology. You know, Jesus is perfect theology. Um, and so um, we were really kind of like wailing around for, I was wailing around for the first 20 years of my life. 
and kind of got into some really, really negative things. Drugs Did you know and, him at that time? Did you meet him in that first 20 years? Um, Sorry to mean to interrupt. No, no I met him at when he was about 20 years old. So that's when we met. Yeah. Yeah. So he was just kind of coming out of um, some of those lifestyle things. Um, yeah, it was very clear. I had a dream um, that uh, I was either going to die or go, go to prison. Um, and so it was a vision and, and I just, I took it as terror. It was terror on me. And I knew that I had to stop doing some of the things. Say, that you I was were living doing. a life that would have led oh, to absolutely. one of those two solu yeah. uh, not solutions. That's yeah. not a solution, <laughs> yeah. but those really bad endings. outcomes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's where that's what my life was focused on. It was very hedonistic, very about myself, very much trying to numb this thing that was going on inside yeah. of my soul. And ultimately, as I look back on it, I just didn't like myself. And when you do bad things, it's hard to like yourself. Um, so I did a lot of bad things. I did a lot of uh, things that hurt other people and hurt myself, uh, hurt my parents, hurt my family. Um, and uh, so it, we end up moving to this little town called Genera, Ohio. I don't know if your signal goes there. Oh. <laughs> um, I don't know if any signal goes to Genera, Ohio, but uh, shout out to those people in Corey Rawsonville. And uh, so we moved to this small town to really get away um, from drugs and the, the, the temptation to kind of like get back into it. And it was there, um, we had had our, our first daughter, Patience, and, and um, you know, Patience was swinging on her swing, and uh, we had a picture of Jesus on the wall. Um, I don't know if it was accurate, he looked a lot like Brad Pitt, but it, <laughs> but it was Jesus, um, at least that's what it represented. And um, as she was swinging, I, I said, well, and her eyes were fixated on this picture, and she was, how old was Patience? Um, about four or five months old at that yeah, time. Yeah, very young, very young. Okay. But um, I always wanted to talk to my kids. I wanted to be a good dad I felt if I was engaging with my kids. So even mm -hmm. my kids didn't understand what I was saying, I was always talking to them. And so she's swinging along and, and uh, I said, that's Jesus, he died for our sins. And right then the conviction of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. like a lightning bolt came down into me and said, you can't tell her about something, you're not living. Wow. And I just, uh, I just bowed down my heart right then. And I said, God, there's not much of this life that's worth anything, but I'll give it to you all. I just want to feel peace in my spirit. Mm -hmm. And uh, shortly after, maybe five minutes afterwards, Amanda um, kind of felt that call. And maybe you can share your experience. Yeah, um, we just felt the tangible presence of God there right in, a, in our apartment. We didn't get saved in a church service. God showed up um, right there in our home, used our beautiful daughter just to show us um, his love and his goodness. And we both just um, got uh, down on our knees and, and, and just prayed and just um, committed our lives to the Lord. Um, and it was from there then that God directed us um, to a church and um, a friend had invited um, Jason um, to church. And so we went and, and then we just began to grow in our faith and our, our knowledge of God um, through that. And that's been a few years ago. <laughs> yeah. God, God yeah. got a hold of you yeah. and has not let go, Absolutely. which is great because he doesn't. We, right, we serve that kind of God. Amen. But, but what, you, what happened that day, wow, that was just the start yeah. of where it is now. Absolutely. I mean, just amazing, mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, subsequently to that, we recognize that when the, the seed is, is distributed, um, you know, there's, there's things that try to come up and choke that out, right? And so that's why it was so fundamentally important for us to um, be involved in a Bible-believing church, mm -hmm. to, pre to preach the gospel mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ and preach the power of God, because um, we were hungry for that. Yeah. Because I say this a lot when I'm, uh, I mentor men, um, and so I say this to guys a lot, because a lot of them don't, they know what not to do. Like we knew what not to do. Um, the Holy Spirit had come into our lives and we knew that we weren't supposed to live like we were living before. But just because you know what you're not supposed to do doesn't mean you do know what you are supposed mm -hmm. to do. And that's where the beauty of the body of Christ comes in. Where being under good biblical teaching, having good doctrine, a good understanding of who Jesus is, is so fundamentally, fundamentally important in spiritual growth. Because if you don't have those things, then 
you tend to kind of like make Jesus in your own image, mm -hmm. right? And before you know it, you've kind of made him what you want him to be rather than him remaking you what he wants you to be. Sounds like our current society. <laughs> in a nutshell, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, not positive. I mean, you know that too at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I want to talk about the, the taco truck and everything before we run out of time. But, you know, I'm thinking right now about our viewers who either are, I don't want to go to church because yeah. they don't feel like they can cross that threshold. Or mm -hmm. I know we have a lot of viewers whose children and grandchildren are 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 the couple in Genera who mm -hmm. haven't accepted Christ. Mm -hmm. But those those our viewers are just praying fervently for those family members. Absolutely. Um, so what was it like for for you guys to to make such a big change? I know we're talking years ago now, and so yeah. whatever details God brings to you is good. But you know. It, it worked. Yeah. You know, we hear the stories in the Bible. We hear, we read, it's true, the accounts of the, the people who accept Christ and then fall away. You know, yeah. we have the parable of the sower. Absolutely. But uh, it, it's just so awesome to see the fruit of what God did that day in Genera. Absolutely, absolutely. And I had just, I had just heard this, that, um, you know, God doesn't produce seasonal fruit. He doesn't want seasonal fruit. Mm -hmm. He wants fruit that remains. And in order for that to happen, there's a clipping. There's, there's a, a trimming of us. And um, so I think that even in the process of, of a prodigal, um, and, and let me just speak to that specifically because I was the prodigal. Um, you know, keep on praying, keep on believing, keep on showcasing the goodness and the graciousness of God. Uh, you have no idea what that is doing. You have no idea what that's doing. I know it seems hard because the heart is hard. The heart in these individuals is hard. My heart was hard. Um, but we pray to the Holy Spirit that He would come and make intercession for us when we have no words uh, to be able to speak to our lost loved ones. Um, so hold that faith. Um, hold on. Um, we see in our culture so many different testimonies of individuals that have been far, far away from Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, through some series of events, the Holy Spirit finds a way to crack through that hard heart and, and return, give it a heart of, of flesh. Yeah. And so we've seen it so many times. Um, we go to Lima First Church and one of, our, one of the most beautiful testimonies that I get to see every week is uh, uh, one of our, our youth leads uh, is a guy named Jacob Piercefield, who was actually in my youth group. I was his youth pastor. <laughs> Uh, he fell away, got into drugs and all kinds of craziness. He's got some wild stories. Maybe you can visit him sometime. Um, and, and he gave his life back to Jesus. God set, him, set a godly wife for him. And now he gets the opportunity to go invest in students the way that I invested in him, which is really cool, but it makes me feel really old. Um, <laughs> and, but this is how the kingdom of God works. Yeah. But have faith. Yeah. Have faith. Have faith for your lost loved one have faith, faith for those that seem far away, those that, that, that seem like their hearts have been seared, have faith. Uh, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so if you wanna please God in the relationship that you have with your lost loved one, have faith. Mm -hmm. and, and trust God's timing. Absolutely. Yeah. His timing is different than ours. We want things right away. We live in the fast food society. Yeah. Well, God's real patient. <laughs> and so if God is patient, then we must be as well. All right, we only have about four more minutes left in our program. So let's go back and talk about now. Mm -hmm. Talk about what's going on now. The shirt, you're wearing the shirts. Yep. Um, yep. The back of the shirt shows more. Yep. Um, but um, you've done several taco outreaches at this point. Yep. And um, so let's just go to the little bit of practical things. You take donations, not on site, yep. but you do take donations from the body of Christ to help with this and volunteers have helped you with, with it. Can you, one of you explain to me even just the process of how this all works, if somebody would like to be involved and be able to help? Well, they can contact us through our Facebook page, which is at Operation Love Whosoever. Um, there's a picture of a guy with a taco. It's really easy to find us. <laughs> um, and uh, so that's primarily, when we started this out, the Lord, you know, obviously there's a practical element of funding um, and the Lord just continually, you know, and we had, you know, as a 513C, you have the opportunity to go for government grants and that sort of thing, but that's a little weird because they try to tell you what you can do with your money. Um, and so I really believed and took a step out on faith that the body of Christ would respond. Um, and uh, we're not 
about a denomination. We're not about a church. Um, we're about church as we're about the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. If you preach the, Jesus, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, we're on your team. Um, and we believe that the body of Christ would step up. And so far what we have seen is that God has uh, provided not only materials, but also money um, to go and, and buy. And, and we've had been helped by so many other ministries. I'd mentioned Neighborhood Relief. They've been very helpful. And other ministries um, have allowed us to be able to do this. So, yeah. so that's kind of where it goes. So we have a Venmo set up. Um, the, uh, the Venmo link is on our Operation Love Whosoever page. So, okay. Or you can contact us directly if you'd like to give a cash gift. Of course, everything's tax deductible. All right. Amanda, when I was at one of your outreaches, I saw you inside the taco truck. So you get volunteers to come in here. How does all that part work out? Um, yeah, again, we use the Facebook page when we um, have an event scheduled. Um, Jason will post on there um, asking for volunteers. And we always have plenty. Um, usually we even have more than what we need and that's been such a blessing. Yeah. Um, so we have um, had plenty of volunteers for every outreach. And the really neat thing is each time we go out, it's been a different team. We've mm -hmm. had new people join us. And so that's been really exciting just to have so many um, different individ individuals just come and partner with us and just ha um, have a blast and be blessed um, by um, participating in outreaches with us. How do you choose where your outreaches are going to take place? Um, so we try to take advantage of as many opportunities as we have. I'm also the gym pastor at Southside Spartans Boxing Gym. Mm -hmm. um, so we've Monty used Redding. that. Yeah, yeah. Monty Redding. <laughs> uh, so we have used uh, 311 East Market um, to at, at, for one of our outreaches. That was kind of our initial event. Um, and so we really look to partner with local ministries that are doing something. Um, so uh, we, have, we have partnered with uh, Damien Tibbs Church down on Kibbe. Um, and I know Aaron and Melinda Henderson had done an event uh, down there and so they invited us to come in and, and give away some free food and and actually um, uh, Next week you will it will be pastor taping, but uh, we will be at Nathan Branham's church mm. um, Handing out bowls of chili. So we're not just one trick pony, right? We can <laughs> give away chili, too yeah. <laughs> Who knows what you're getting with Operation Love whosoever. So. All right, whatever God asks you to do. Amen. Amen. All right Well, we are out of time um, I feel like I should have you back sometime because I feel like that marriage talk we could have a multi-part series <laughs> on on that one but thank you so much to both of you really just for saying yes to god I mean, that's a starting point and i know this is this is just the we're still at the beginning best decision we be ever made exciting to see all the things that god has planned to do thanks to both of you being willing Amen. Yeah. all right remember you. you can go to the facebook page to find out more or you can call me at the tv station and i will also connect you with jason and amanda I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Jason and Amanda as much as I did. Again, to contact them about supporting or volunteering with Operation Love Whosoever, visit their Facebook page or contact me right here at TV44 and I'll help get you connected to Jason and Amanda. Remember, you don't have to go overseas to become a missionary. Where you are planted right now is the place where God has you for a very important reason. Well, that's all the time we have for our show today. More testimonies coming in the months to come on In the Community. I'm Jennifer Beck.